Yeah, welcome to our Wednesday night prayer and Bible study. Uh, this service is coming to you from beautiful downtown Bunker Hill, uh, home of Bunker Hill Baptist Church. We're glad that you were able to tune in with us to, today to be a part of this evening worship service, and I do hope and pray uh, that we can soon be able to worship together in our own sanctuary. But until then, uh, we'll continue to uh, live stream and uh, uh, face Facebook uh, to you. In way of announcements, I want to remind you, uh, deacons, uh, that there will be no uh, deacons meeting until we uh, are able to all meet again here in regular services, so take note of that. I uh, do want to say happy uh, birthday, sort of belated happy birthday to Terrell Broom. His birthday was yesterday. Also, Thad Shivers had a birthday yesterday. And Miss Nancy Connerly uh, will be having a birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to y'all. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, all of you are doing well. Carmen and I will be celebrating our 30, uh, 49th wedding anniversary tomorrow. And uh, so I uh, want to say to her, thank you for putting up with me for 49 years. And uh, with that being said, I want to turn our attention to our prayer list because it is pretty extensive. Uh, I want to put Kenny Holloway on it. He had a, a massive heart attack. Uh, Miss Winnie Young has been in the hospital with some breathing problems. Uh, Miss Sandra Hartfield, that's Joe Lofton's sister. She'll have a bone marrow transplant uh, on May the 7th, I believe. And uh, Miss Terry Gigger, we've got her listed as uh, in the hospital. She's at home now and uh, waiting on some test results. Uh, Miss Marie Brewer is in the Grove and uh, hasn't been doing well, so continue to remember to pray for her, as well as uh, Tom Bourne, uh, who's in the rehab at Forest General Hospital. He's doing a lot better. He had a stroke. And uh, continue to pray for Mr. Fred Herring. Uh, uh, he uh, is going through some couple of more uh, rounds of cancer treatments, and uh, they've really been hard on him, so continue to pray for him. Uh, Miss Marguerite Spikes, uh, she's in Marion uh, General now. She's in the swing bed, and um, uh, continue to pray for her. Miss Patty Bridges, that's Connie Bridges' mother, uh, had a temporal artery bypass, so continue to pray for her. Um, Pray for the family of Elsie uh, Pittman and uh, the family of uh, Rudy Cooper and uh, Miss Trina Powell family. That's Gannon Rogers' sister. Uh, they'll be doing a graveside service at 11 a.m. Friday at Society Hill. So be in prayer for them. And pray for the rest of who are on our prayer list, especially those uh, who are in the groves and the nursing homes, Myrtles, uh, as well as all the rest of them. Uh, pray uh, for our leaders and our country uh, as we continue to battle with this uh, virus and uh, pray that it will soon be over with quickly. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for being God in our lives. And Father, because you are God, Lord, we know that you're at work in our lives even when we don't know, uh, Father, exactly what to do or where to go. So, Father, we come to you today, bringing all of our burdens, all of our cares to you. Lord, we lift up all of these who've been mentioned on the prayer list and those who've lost loved ones. Father, continue uh, to minister to them, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit. And, Father, we do pray uh, for all of those who are in the nursing homes, those who are shut in, all of us, Father, who have been sheltered in place, I do pray. Lord, that you would uh, soon bring an end to this virus, that we could all be back together again. Lord, just thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus Christ. And we pray that in his precious name. Amen. One of the things that is coming to our human nature is worry. And I began to start reading again through uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Will has been doing a great job preaching at Sunday night on the Lord's Prayer. And as I was reading through all of that, uh, I came across this favorite part of my scripture. I like to uh, thank it to be an encouragement to us who are prone to worry. It came from, uh, well, actually, you can find it in Matthew 6, 23 uh, through 34 or Luke chapter 12, 22 through 31. 
Now both of them are pretty much the same, just a little wording is different, but the meaning is still the same. I want to begin reading in Luke chapter 12, uh, verses 22 and following. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the, uh, how the wild flowers grow. They labor or sp they do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon, all of his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what and do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagans run after such things, but your heavenly Father knows that you need him. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. You know, one of the things that you and I really need to understand is that Jesus Christ knows everything. He knows everything about us. He knows our hearts. He knows the good things and He knows the bad things. He even knows our propensity to worry. Matter of fact, He talked about this and says, do not worry. Uh, you know, but I think He knows even how we would respond when you say, well, Lord, you say do not worry, but uh, you don't know what I'm really dealing with or what I'm, I'm facing. Lord, I can't help but to worry. It seems we worry about everything. Taking care of our families, we worry about our jobs, about our children, and I could just go on and on about things that causes us to worry. Worry causes us to play a little mind game. The mind game is called what if. You ever played that game with yourself? What if something goes wrong? What if I lose my job? What if I get sick? Or even worse, what if I get this COVID-19, this virus, COVID-19? You know, the last several months, the what ifs of this pandemic has caused many to worry and be anxious. Probably more than anything I've ever seen in my lifetime. And while it's bad, we have to understand that God is really in control. And we got to trust Him with every bit of our lives. Submit to Him. You know, that what if scenario is limitless. You can just come up with all type of scenarios of what if. And if you allow it to, it will grow larger the more you think about it. The problems will get worse. We'll think about what might happen or what could happen. I want to tell you, this may shock some of you, but the reality is there is very little we can do about anything. Much less about this virus that's going around. What will or will not happen. Now certainly, you and I have got to do our part, acting responsible doing the right things. But worrying over any situation or circumstances that we come to will do nothing to change what we worry about. Except maybe drive us nuts. And some won't have to drive too far. Because this worry is something that will wreck your mind. My question is, how can we possibly get through life without this debilitating worry that just sort of shuts us down. The world says that there's so much that we need to worry about. How can we not worry? Jesus provides the answer to worry. Don't do it. You don't need to do it. Therefore I tell you, do not worry 
really what he's saying, don't worry about the things of this world. He says it four times. In verse 22, 25, 26, and 29. We aren't to worry about our life. He's the one who gave us life. We're not to worry about what we are eat or drink. He'll provide it. It may not be the best in the world that you are used to, but He will take care of you. Don't worry about your body. We pamper our bodies. We take care of our bodies. We do all of that. He said, don't worry about all of those things. Don't even worry about what you're going to wear. Because He said, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? I believe Jesus gives the best reason for not worrying is if God is the provider of life and the body, and there is no question that He is the provider and the sustainer, He will also provide for what we need as His children. What we need to sustain us. In Luke chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus sort of illustrates this point. He said, Consider the ravens, the birds. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than birds. Well, think about that. Everything that God has created is in His total care. Even the birds of the air. Everything that He has created, He takes care of. He cares for something like the birds who don't even sow, don't reap, don't store. And God feeds them. He sees that the food is there. And the question Jesus asked, aren't you more valuable than that? And the answer is yes. We are created in the image of God. That means that we're heirs to the kingdom of God and all that He has. That means that there's a home prepared for us by Jesus Christ. For those who've trusted in Jesus and submitted their lives to Him. Jesus is not saying that we don't have to do anything to receive these provisions of life. The birds, God has provided them, that's true. They don't store, they don't put it in barn, but they got to fly out of that nest to get the worms and the seeds and the bugs that God has provided. So you and I also must take responsibility in our life as well for obtaining what God has already promised to provide. Instead of worrying about it, just go ahead and trust God that He'll provide as you uh, do His will uh, through your life. Um, when we are committed to our Lord wholeheartedly, He's going to take care of us. So you don't have any need to worry is what Jesus is saying. You know, as I look back on this, I think about how many times God has proved Himself over and over to be faithful, to sustain, and to provide what I need. And I'm sure if you think about it in your own life, you can say yes and amen to that as well. God has really taken care of what we need. Jesus points something out in verse 25 too. He says, uh, it's useless to worry. It accomplished nothing. He says, because our lives are in God's hands. All the worrying in the world won't add one minute or one hour to our lives. He said, who by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Jesus is saying, it's not worth the effort to worry about things you have no control over. You know, worrying about anything in general accomplishes nothing. God makes it very clear. Our lives are in His hands. And what better hands to be in than your Creator's hands. All the worry in the world won't allow us to live one minute beyond our appointed time that God has for us. You know, there is an appointed time for us and it's in God's hands for each one of us. When we find ourselves lost in the storm of worry, remember, we're acting just like the pagans did in verse 30. 
They are lost. They live only for the things of this world. They have nothing else to look forward to, but that's not the case with you and I. You see, we don't have to worry because God, our Heavenly Father, He loves us. Jesus has saved us. And we have the promises of God to help us when we start to find ourselves worrying. Why worry about the things that God has already promised to provide? So let's take God's advice. Don't worry. Just trust Him. Trust Him that God is going to take care of us just like He does the, the, the birds of the air. And God will take care of us. When we seek that kingdom of God and His righteousness, Jesus says... All these other things will be added unto you. All these other things means whatever is needed in your life will be given to you. As long as you let Jesus rule and reign in your life. So don't worry about the things of what if, what could, and what may be happened. Just look to Jesus who's promised it. Never will I leave you or will I forsake you. Jesus says, therefore, do not worry. Father, I thank You for Your Word today. Lord, may it encourage us. May it re-instruct us. Because, Lord, You know, because of the very message that You give us through this Sermon on the Mount, that we're prone to worry because we take our eyes off of You. Father, help us to stay focused upon You and not worry about the things we have no control over, but the things that we can do something about. May we be busy doing it for Your kingdom glory. Lord, bless this message to our heart, and I pray it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.